Howdy YouTube and welcome to RV Daydream. We're back home. This is the first day back from camping. What am I doing? What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. I apologize for that last day of video because it was boring, 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 boring. Yeah, I've got a bunch of stuff on our plate, and I wanted to talk about all the stuff we got you guys to look forward to. Uh, projects, basically projects. So I'm waiting for a few things. Um, you know I put those rooftop AC, whatever, easy starts on there, uh, micro or easy starts, and I have to do some testing uh, with the generator. But remember i had some other stuff going on with the generator too do you remember what that was this came while we were on vacation or on our little trip look i still haven't put our power cord away or nothing uh but yeah this is the uh that power module the guy said he was going to send uh, and they did and it came right away so i'm gonna have to change that in the champion generator which will be kind of cool i also bought something else really cool what do you think that is what do you think that is? It's a cap. I'll give you that hint. Well, it goes to something else. And I haven't got all of it yet, but let me show you what I have got so far. It's an extended run tank for our Honda generator that we haven't got yet. Now, how could we not have our Honda generator yet? Let me tell you that story. Not that long ago, in a land very close to this area, <laughs> somebody sat on the computer and ordered a Honda generator. Even though he knew he was going to go on vacation, he knew the shipping would take quite some time because it was free shipping and it was coming from the state of Washington. Bum, ba -da -bum, bum, ba. Little did he know that once he went on vacation, the place that he bought it from would ship it out of their warehouse from Indiana. And it came right away. And since he didn't expect it to be delivered, he did not check to see if it was being delivered. And even though he was getting alerts on his phone that FedEx was coming onto his porch, he just assumed it was for something stupid. And yet, it wasn't. So, the Honda generator was attempted to be delivered at the house two times, and that's one of the reasons we left on Sunday night to get back home for Monday because they said that it was going to be delivered the next business day. Monday's a business day. Saturday was the second attempt. On the third attempt, they don't attempt no more, they send it back. Then usually the shipper gets upset and charges you shipping to ship it back out to you again because they had to absorb that initial shipping charge and the one coming back. So. What did I do? We came home, we walked up to the door, we seen the door tag where they attempted to deliver on Friday. They attempted to deliver on Saturday, and because of the dollar amount, they required a signature, and somebody had to be here. Of course, nobody was. So Sunday we knew, no chance of delivery, that's not a business day. When we pulled the tag off, it said, one more attempt's gonna be made, or it's going to be another delivery exception and it will be shipped back potentially look on the back for your delivery instructions or for your day that it's going to be delivered so I flipped it over and on there it said FedEx ground the time that they deliver normal business days Monday through Friday home deliveries normal business days Tuesday through Saturday so this is a home and it's not a business the other one said for businesses, the FedEx ground business, we're home. So I'm thinking, oh, it's probably going to be delivered Tuesday. So I went inside, I typed in the tracking number, and sure enough, FedEx site said Tuesday, it's going to be delivered. So Heidi and I decided that most likely it wasn't going to come on Monday because we were a home delivery. So at that point, I decided that I was going to mow our lawn and... Heidi was going to go to her mom's house and mow her mom's lawn. So just before I went out the door to get on the mower, I decided I better shave my face. 
it's been quite a while, basically five or six days, and I had it shaven, and I'm going to be on the mower, and I don't want to have any kind of a weird shadow or something if I catch sun, it's, and it was a real bright sunny day, obviously. And I stepped back in the house, I went in and I shaved quickly in the bathroom, and rinsed my face off, put on my ball cap, put on my shoes, and went to go out the front door, and lo and behold, there was another attempt delivery that was made five minutes prior as the time indicated on the tag to the current time that I was standing there going, what the f It's like, wow, this sucks. That's the third attempt. And why did they make an attempt? Because it wasn't supposed to be till Tuesday. Even online it said Tuesday. So I went inside, sat down, got the 800 number, and I called and spoke with FedEx. Now, this is how screwy that they are. I, I didn't quite understand this part. FedEx says that if you are going to have a package delivered to you, and it requires a signature, and after three attempts, they will send it back, you can still, at that point, say, I want it sent to the local pickup center, which in our case, they had to tell me, was the Walgreens in Alliance. So, I told her, is it going to be sent back? And she says, as it stands right now, it shows that Tuesday it's going to be delivered at your home. So, I thought, great, but it said that yesterday, and yet it came today. So what's the deal? And she says, right now as it stands, it shows that Tuesday it's scheduled to be delivered at your home. So I thought I was going to be in good shape. But then I thought, I've been stuck before on stuff. I'm going to ask a question that seems obvious in this conversation, but maybe the answer's not so obvious. So I told her. Is there any chance when that driver gets back to Canton and says, guess what, he wasn't there again, and they look at it and say, third time, strike three, it's out of here, would they do that? She goes, that's a possibility. Paw, 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 paw. Now, why didn't she tell me that? Why did she tell me that right off the bat? So I said, well, in that case, just make it to where I can go pick it up. I will pick it up at Walgreens. And she goes, well, it'll be a one or two day delay potentially because it has to go back and then it has to go back out on another truck and they have to deliver to Walgreens. Then you'll be notified when it's available to be picked up, blah, 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 la, 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 whatever. So that's why I don't have my new Honda generator. And that's what this tanks for. That whole story was to explain why I don't have the generator. But I do have this extended run tank. Now there's somebody that makes these and uh, the Atwood has one. The Atwood one's not as good as this one. Uh, this thing is not like you would think. You know, my gas cans, I can push in them and, and they, they bulge and they do all kinds of weird stuff. You know, cold, hot, whatever. But these are uh, marine grade. I mean, they're very substantial. And this guy uses US Coast Guard approved UV protected or UV inhibited hose, which is, is a really sturdy hose. It's flexible, but it's very sturdy. Um, he makes or has some kind of high dollar um, connectors that whenever this thing is disconnected, no fumes or gas can come out of this line. So this tank could be full as long as I have this vent closed like that. Um, as soon as I disconnect it, I can tip this upside down and it won't leak. Um, it won't come out the hose. It won't pour out the hose or anything. But when I wanted to connect to the Honda generator, he gave me that cap. And this thing has got an unbelievable seal on it. It's machined very well. Um, it's thick. This is not a chintzy, lightweight piece. This is pretty heavy considering that it's aluminum, um, except for, of course, these two fittings. And whenever I want to hook up the uh, tank to the Honda generator, I just uh, slide the fitting on. I just slide this on, which I'm going to try to show you here. Just like so. And it depresses a little ball that's in there, which I'll try to take that off. And you can see there's a little ball that's in there, a little steel ball. 
and what this does is allow the generator not to leak fumes gas fumes out whenever you disconnect this and if it turns upside down it's not going to leak at least out of the cap it'll probably leak out of the carburetor or something but um, at least it won't leak out of this cap so this is a very very nice now what does all this do well this gives me the ability to carry gas and you guys that have been watching me for a while about generators you know how i don't like carrying gas and that's the whole reason we were running that champion generator uh because you know it runs on propane well i can put gas in here and i don't have to worry about it venting out into the back of the truck this is a six gallon uh tank basically if you fill this tank up and you fill up the tank on the honda generator and you hook them both together and you have a really light load on the generator apparently the number they use is a quarter load this will run a long time how long 75 hours that's a lot so at a full load with the thing on full load full bore whatever that may be um, this tank and the Honda tank filled uh, will run 30 hours so if I'm running rooftop AC units I can fill this tank I can fill the Honda and it'll run for 30 hours and that is awesome because again that champion generator one of the reasons I wanted to run it uh, exclusively and run it on propane is because the propane tank even though it cost more to run it on propane it also runs 12 hours running my air conditioner on our old RV so it would run longer than the onboard gas tank now I could have got one of these extended kits and I still could all I have to do is get uh, one of these caps for a champion generator and I could make it run on you know gasoline for a long period of time but again we're switching gears here uh, that whole micro air easy start thing that I put on the roof that changed up things that made it to where that champion might only be used when I need to run both rooftop airs which I've got to test and see if it'll run both of them on 30 amp I'm pretty darn sure it will I'm sure they can kick on and kick off cycle on and off and they'll run both of them but we got to test all that stuff that's coming up too so got lots of things to do oh yeah there's one more thing actually there's two more things don't mind the mess you guys remember when I did a review on this this came off our old truck this rock-solid tow guard those thing it's awesome I love it I there's nothing wrong with this this thing did exceptionally well for a long ways with our f-250 and our old camper however it's not long enough now the flaps aren't long enough and unfortunately that hitch uh, where it goes on the hitch that's only for a two inch and we have two and a half inch now so I was thinking about trying to utilize this and put some sort of a rubber flap on there and it, it was adding weight uh, you know I, I added a found a rubber flap at a local truck stop and I picked it up and then I thought about how much weight would be suspended on that metal now that metal that goes across is plenty strong enough for this plastic that's on there but it wouldn't be able to handle those heavy flaps but anyways it just wasn't going to work I tried to make it work I wanted to make it work but it wasn't going to work so I ordered a new one and that'll be coming in a few day tomorrow actually tomorrow and it's a big one so we'll talk about that and of course I'll be doing a video on that a, a separate review um, but yeah it goes all the way across the back it was expensive like everything else but I wanted to make sure that we protected our RV because our RV got really jacked up me going down one country road taking it on a test ride and they had tractors that they had the farmers had pulled out of the field multiple times into the roadway and there was so much crap on the road and it got slung all up on the the front of the RV oh I know where we can see it possibly on the frame of the RV yeah look see all that all that stuff was from those farmers uh, the crap that he had on the road and it just slung it all up on the RV all up in here I'm gonna have to hose that off one day or spray it off with the, the uh, pressure washer and finally what else did we get well when we went camping we got in a situation that was kind of strange
Look at the butterfly. It's so nice looking. He's wanting to stay in the shadows. He doesn't want to, he's camera shy. Nice, huh? So Heidi and I, when we were camping, we found that we were putting the awning in and out, in and out. No big deal, it's power. It's just the push of a button. I know our old awning, we had a tendency to leave it out, even when it got a little windy. And then you could do the awning tie downs. Now, I can do the awning tie downs on this, but the thing was is if it really got rainy or really got windy, I would have to go out, disconnect the tie downs, and then unhook them, and then put the awning in. And that kind of defeats the purpose of having the in, out, in, out button whenever you wanted it. One thing we always thought about doing, even with the old RV, was getting one of those screened in rooms, one of those ADA rooms, and they're kind of expensive, but I thought that would be kind of nice, you know, get that room and, you know, it slides on here and it's a zipper panel. And then she talked about just getting a sunscreen, one of those that goes in the roller tube here and then uh, it zips off and you zip the screen back on when you want it, to, you know, to use it. Well, while we were out there, we noticed that there was a lot of ground bugs. A lot of these bugs were gnats and stuff that were around our ankles and our feet. And she brought up the point of, well, how does that work? She says, if that's laid out, that add a room, we would have to put a tarp down or we'd have to put our, our mat down. And, you know, she says, that doesn't sound like something that I necessarily want to do. And she says, and then what if the storm, you know, storms come? You know, we'd have to rip that add a room off real quick, take everything, you know, out from the add a room and throw it in the, the back of the truck or in the, uh, storage compartment and then put the awning in so she said you know we just bought those that canopy um, and it has three sides on it and it's a 10 by 10 uh, what do you think about you you know utilizing that well we always thought we would carry around our other canopy our big 10 by 10 canopy just in case we get in a situation where we couldn't put our awning out We've been in campsites that the trees are so close that you couldn't put your awning out all the way if you wanted to. So we thought, well, it'd be nice to have that canopy and maybe we could put it around the back of the RV where there's more room or maybe on the other side or depending on what the campsite is, we just wanted options that we could still have an enclosure we could sit under. We normally have our picnic table canopy, which you guys have seen that plenty of times, but unfortunately, we didn't have a picnic table this last time. And we thought, what if that's a common theme? We run into where there's a lot of places that don't have picnic tables. And that picnic table canopy, it doesn't really protect you from bugs or anything like that. And our big Titan Shade, which we love, that one's definitely the best pop-up canopy that we've had. Um, the 10 by 10. The problem with that is the sides that you can buy for it, they're not vented, there's no windows in them they're kind of made for vendors as shows and it's not even good quality sides the rest of the canopy is awesome but the side that they the sides they offer really suck that's kind of why we bought that other canopy the other pop-up canopy we bought that in case our son needed it at the flea market he went to and if we decide to start selling stuff at flea markets uh, or swap meets uh, also when we have our yard sale we'll be able to set it up and that other one has really good sides to it. Very nice sides with openings and everything. Um, you know, it's got like a door opening and a window opening on one panel, and it looks professional, and it, it's just, it would, would secure what we wanted to as far as selling stuff. However, it wouldn't be something that we wanted to camp out in, you know, and hang out inside, unless it was raining and maybe we needed to protect ourselves from the wind. So, what did we do to make this all go away that's what we did now I have a rain fly that's coming for this because this is water resistant quite a bit water resistant will handle moderate rain however the only way to ensure that it doesn't get wet inside there is by buying the rain fly that clips onto here um, definitely we're definitely doing that this one has a floor so there's no ground bugs coming up from the ground into the canopy and it just velcros on it just clips on and all these sides they have windows or they have big windows where you can really get some breeze coming through here and you want breeze because it's about 87 out today 
and the heat that's coming through this thing's pretty strong. Now with the rain fly on there, that'll help considerably, but this is much bigger than our 10 by 10. So anyways, I did a review video on this. Uh, you guys can go check that out. Uh, at some point it will be posted, maybe after this video, this is kind of an update video. But yeah, this is uh, slick. And what this will do is allow us to get rid of both of those other canopies whenever we are done with them. Whenever we have our yard sales and all that happy stuff, we'll get rid of them. Um, so this one here, We'll utilize for swap meets and yard sales. Uh, it's blue, and there's the blue sides for it. It's got sandbags to hold it down. This will be very, very nice for us to get our stuff sold. Again, we're thinking about doing swap meets and uh, flea markets, and our son wants to do flea markets too. Um, this is all stuff to be sold. I mean, this is just a small little, small, this is just a tiny little bit. <laughs> we still have to get that out of here. Um, and nobody's buying our chair. Can you believe it? Heidi, she's going to have a hard time getting me not to ride this thing around because it's fun. I, I've ridden around in the garage and I rode it around in the yard one time. <laughs> so that's my project list update. Uh, a lot of projects coming up. I'll do everything that I can to shoot what I can on it. And if you guys have questions or, you know, whatever, just ask me. Um, it's not that we always, you know, answer right away, but we try to. And Heidi a lot of times says, hey, there's a question for you. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to doing a few things. Now, today, unfortunately, I'm waiting for two things. Uh, for FedEx to tell me, yes, your product has showed up at the uh, uh, Walgreens, local Walgreens. I can go up there and get that. And number two, um, I've got to put this uh, on the Champion. And, and I know that Champion comes apart, but I think it's, it's a little tricky when it comes apart from what I can remember. But, uh, yeah, I'll replace the control unit. Oh, yeah, I wanted to give you an update about the window, too. As you guys know, the window shattered, broke, all that crap on this thing. And I was very, very unhappy. I was an unhappy boy. Uh, but they uh, decided to cover it under warranty, which was awesome. And uh, I had to go and have it installed, which was awesome. But on the way home, when I was driving home, I mean, this thing... It, it was like rattling all the way home. I'm like, what in the world is going on? Why is it rattling? It, it was shaking. The whole thing was shaking. And it's still, look at this. See how much it, well, the whole thing kind of does that as you drive down the road. Um, this side's not like that. I mean, there's some movement, but nothing like the other side. I mean, it there. and I'm like, why? What could possibly be different? Well, I'll show you what's different. You see this here? There are bump stops here. See them? So there's two here, right? Two here. And if you come up here, you can't even see them. <laughs> but there's one there for sure. There might be another one down below. Yep, there's one down here. Again, you can barely see it. And I don't think, let me look. Yeah, there, there's one up top there. And I don't know, maybe there's supposed to be one up top here that I didn't see. Let me look. Uh, no, I don't see this one up top here. However, those stops obviously rub on the cap because you can see there's a wear mark right there where the thing rubs when you close this up and tighten it up a little bit. Uh, this one has none. There's none on there. And now I've got to deal with that somehow. I don't know if, I don't know what they're going to do because I, I don't think that I can stall those things on my own. You've seen how hard it was just to even see the ones up top. So yeah, that's what we're dealing with right now. The never ending window. Oh, so sad. And on that note, I hope to see you out there. Bye.